So today, we're talking about how to create mask wipe transitions in Final Cut Pro. For a mask wipe transition, you simply draw a mask around the shape or object that is the subject of the transition and keyframe that mask over time to transition seamlessly into the next shot. Mask wipe transitions are relatively easy to pull off and in this video I'm going to show you how to do it step by step, I'm going to go over how to pick the right shots to use for this type of transition and I'm also going to show you a few workflow tips to make the masking process a little bit easier, which will help you save some time when creating a mask wipe transition. I'm going to go through the masking process for two shots in this tutorial, with the second one being a little bit more complicated than the first. But let's first talk about what kind of shots work best for wipe transitions. There are three main things that I look for, with the first one being the subject must cover the frame from edge to edge. If the subject of your transition doesn't cover the frame, your mask has nowhere to go and you won't be able to pull this transition off in a convincing way. The second thing is that the subject must move from one side of the frame to the other. For example, if your subject covers the entire frame from top to bottom, then you want the subject to enter your frame on the left or the right and move across your screen to achieve a smooth wipe transition. The third thing I look for is that the subject shouldn't take too long to move across the frame. Firstly, if it takes your subject 5 seconds to move across the frame, that's a whole lot of time consuming keyframing work, but also it doesn't really give you the feeling of something wiping across the screen. In most cases, I would probably want it to be less than 2 seconds. Let's start with this shot of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. I shot this from behind a glass balcony and I moved my camera up past the handrail to reveal the cathedral. This shot meets the three criteria that I mentioned before. It covers the frame from edge to edge, it moves from one side of the frame to the other, in this case top to bottom, and the full transition takes place in less than two seconds. The first thing I always do is to mark the beginning and the end of where the transition will be so that I can visually see the duration of the transition. This is where the subject of the transition enters the frame, in other words, this handrail, and I'll be drawing the mask on this side of the handrail. So I'll create a marker here by using the shortcut M. And again over here where the bottom edge of this handrail moves off the frame. Next, I'll go over to my effects panel and search for the draw mask effect and apply that to my clip. I'll set the zoom on my viewer to 50% here so that I can see some negative space around the frame. This is helpful when drawing your mask. Next, I'll put my playhead somewhere in the middle between these two markers and I'll draw my mask. I'll explain why I start in the middle a little bit later. This one is pretty easy because it's a straight line. I'll show you a more complicated mask in the next shot, but a simple mask is all that this shot needs. And depending on how you draw your mask, you might need to invert it over here using this little checkbox. I'll feather the edges slightly so that there's no hard edge, and then I'll click on the little plus here to create a keyframe for these control points. If I expand this, you can see all the points I created for this mask. Next, I'll switch my view to original so that I can see my entire shot as I keyframe the mask. The reason I do this is because for some subjects it's actually hard to tell if you're masking out the right things when you're in composite view. So I keep this set to original until I'm done with my keyframing. Next, I'll move on to the beginning of the shot to before where the handrail comes into the shot and I'll move these control points up. New keyframes will automatically be created. If you want to view the keyframes, simply select the clip and hit Ctrl V. You can see I have keyframes here in the middle and here at the beginning. If you look at the angle that this rail has moved, the point on the left will be higher than the one on the right. So I'll move the points to about there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go in and tweak it. Now let me explain why I started in the middle. If I scrub backwards from the middle to the beginning, you can see that the mask is not too far off. The basic shape is there. If you draw your mask at the beginning of the clip when the subject of your transition is off the frame, chances are the mask shape will be slightly off and you'll end up spending more time keyframing this mask frame by frame. Now I'll go to the halfway point between the keyframe at the beginning and the keyframe in the middle and I'll adjust my mask here to line up with the handrail again. Now if I scrub through here, notice how my mask looks pretty good in this section over here. So for this section, I don't need to go in frame by frame to adjust the mask. This section at the beginning here needs a little bit of work, so I'll go a few frames back using my arrow keys and I'll adjust the mask again. This point on the left up here is no longer visible, so I'll zoom out to 25% so that I can see that point and I'll reposition it to about there. 
I'll zoom back into 50% and I'll go through frame by frame here just to check the mask, tweaking it a little bit as I go if I need to. That looks good to me. And now the first half of this transition is done. I'll do the same thing for the second half, starting where my end marker is, and I'll move the points on this mask off the screen. I'll come back to the halfway point between the middle and the end and I'll adjust the mask again. I can go through refining the mask again in sections and just adjust the mask where necessary. At the end here, I'll need to go frame by frame just to make a few more detailed adjustments. And I think that looks pretty good just like that. Let's switch the view mode on the mask back to composite and play the transition back. You can always go back and tweak your mask in composite view if you need to do any fine tuning. The last step will be to add some sort of whoosh sound effect to enhance the transition and you can play around with the timing of that until you're happy. Here is the final transition again with the sound effect. I find that these mask wipe transitions work best if you shoot your footage with the transition in mind because then you can be sure to meet the three criteria that I spoke about earlier. If you guys would be interested in a tutorial on how to shoot and edit these mask transitions from beginning to end, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll do a video on that. Let's move on to the second shot in this tutorial which is a GoPro clip from Amsterdam and I'll show you how to create a more complicated mask wipe transition. This woman crosses through the frame on her bicycle from left to right and she does it in less than a second. So this would be a great shot to use for a mask wipe transition. If only she covered the frame from edge to edge. But we can fix that. Since it's a GoPro clip, the first thing I want to do is to fix these distorted edges here. So I'll add Alex4D's wide angle fix plug into the clip and I'll set the lens to custom and slide the slider here to straighten the edges. That looks much better. This is one of my favorite free plugins and I go over this one and a bunch of others in my 10 best free plugins for Final Cut Pro video. So if you haven't already seen that, please check it out. The link is in the description down below. Since this GoPro clip was shot in 4K, I can scale it up and move it up a little bit so that she covers the frame from edge to edge. Be sure to scrub through to make sure she covers the frame from edge to edge for the entire duration of the transition. At the end here, there's a gap between her head and the top of the frame. I'll need to scale her up just a little bit more and move her up slightly. Now I can add markers to mark the beginning and the end of the transition and I'm going to draw a mask on her back. So I'll go frame by frame here until her back is just out of the frame. I'll add a marker here and then I'll move on to the end where she leaves the frame and I'll add another marker over there. There are a few important things to keep in mind before drawing your mask. If you have anything that will affect the shape of the mask, you need to do those steps first. Whether you're changing the scale or repositioning a clip or if you're using something like the wide angle fix plugin to fix distorted edges or even stabilizing a clip. Do that before you add your draw mask effect. If you go ahead and draw your mask and keyframe the whole transition only to find out that you need to stabilize the clip, your mask and keyframes will be slightly off and you'll have to go back and edit the mask for every single keyframe. Back to the shot from Amsterdam. Let's put the playhead between the two markers, add the draw mask effect and start drawing the mask around her. If you click and drag while creating a new point, you can create a bezier curve instead of having a mask with only straight lines. I'm going to just speed this up because you don't need to see me drawing this entire mask. And once the mask is done, I'll feather it out a little bit and I'll create a keyframe here in the middle. I'll switch to original view and I'll head to the beginning to start adjusting my keyframes. If you look at her basic shape as she moves through the transition, it doesn't change too much. So I want to grab all of these points and move them. You can click on each one of them using the shift key, but I find that sometimes causes those points to move as you click on them. A quicker and more accurate way is to drag a selection around those points by simply clicking and dragging. Then you can move those points off the edge of the frame and I'll go one frame forward and line up the mask with the back of her head. If I scrub through here, you can see that we definitely need to tweak things, but the basic shape is there and it'll make my keyframing work a lot easier. Again, I'm going to speed this up here as I go through frame by frame, adjusting each point on the mask from the beginning until the halfway point. I'll go to the end again, select all the points and move them off the frame to complete the transition. Now I'll go back in here from the middle to the end adjusting the mask and the keyframes as needed. Keyframing the mask is the most time consuming part when it comes to creating mask wipe transitions, but being able to pull this transition off will make your edits more dynamic and interesting. Now that the mask is done, I'll switch back to composite view and I'll play that back. All that's missing now is a good old whoosh sound effect and maybe the sound of a bicycle chain and a bell as she comes past. I'll pop the whoosh in over here. I'll time the bell to where she enters the frame and I'll have the sound of the chain just before that and I'll fade that in. And I'll also let it continue past the point where she exits the frame and I'll fade that out too. Here is the final mask wipe transition for this shot. 
You can also apply what you've learned in this video to other kinds of mask transitions. For example, you can transition through doors or windows or pretty much anything you put your mind to. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a separate video where I go through something like that in a bit more detail. That's it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. I know some of you haven't done it yet, so do it, do it, and I'll catch you in the next one.